How's it going everybody? My name is Absalom and welcome to part one for the Village of Shadows difficulty all collectibles walkthrough for Resident Evil Village. In this series I'm going to be covering every file, every outhouse, every weapon part, everything that you can possibly pick up that is a collectible I will be covering as well as how to actually beat this on Village of Shadows. And the reason I'm only focusing on collectibles and not so much trophies or challenges is because a lot of those actually require multiple playthroughs, so I wanted to show you guys a full walkthrough for the hardest difficulty as well as getting all the collectibles. And then in another video, I might make a trophy guide and or challenge guide. So please let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that and I'll be happy to work on that. But with that out of the way, I have a few more things I want to go over as for how to set up for Village of Shadows because it is very important that you set up correctly before actually starting the game. So let's get to the setup part of this walkthrough. So the first thing you want to do is make your way to the bonus content area of the main menu and then using your points from your previous completion of a game and or completing challenges now you can unlock certain items so the first thing i would recommend doing is unlocking infinite ammo for the grenade launcher um, however for this walkthrough i'm going to show you uh, what happens if you don't do that because it's pretty easy to explain how to rocket launcher your way through the game It's just point and shoot So I wanted to make this walkthrough pertaining to someone who maybe didn't have that because that's what I would want more help with Anyways is how to get through the game without the rocket launcher So I would recommend unlocking infinite ammo for the rocket launcher and or the shotgun However, I'm gonna show you what happens if you just unlock ammo for the pistol. So keeping that in mind, please make your own decisions. The rocket or the grenade launcher is by far the best gun to use. However, here's the weapons I did. I got the Lemmy unlocked uh, infinite ammo and then I unlocked some special weapons as well. So now let's move on to the next section and how to actually get the game set up. So to actually load into the game with your weapons and bonus content, make your way to the load file of the main menu and then select the previous save data from the completed game that you just saved on from your last completion. And you're going to find that it's going to ask you for which difficulty you want to play off of that file name. And that's where you'd select Village of Shadows and then load into the game. This way you get to start with all of your weapons. And if you don't do that, you're going to be starting with just the pistol. Now, I tried to put together a walkthrough for just simply your first time ever and I found that it's almost next to impossible. So this is absolutely recommended for this playthrough. Now with all of that out of the way, I'm almost ready to get started. I wanna make it very clear that for the rest of this series for this playthrough, I'm going to be skipping all of the cutscenes, um, mainly because I've had issues in the past and I don't wanna get demonetized and or removed from YouTube. Um, and also I don't wanna spoil anything for anyone that might be using this as more of a tool and I don't wanna spoil the, uh, the big cinematic scenes. So I'm gonna be skipping all the cutscenes for this walkthrough. And also the only other thing is I just want to reiterate that every single collectible is going to be shown in this walkthrough. So please follow along. I'm going to have timestamps at the bottom for each chapter for each collectible. So if you're just one of those people that already wants to get all the collectibles, feel free to skip through and this will pertain to any difficulty. So um, this is kind of a two in one video. It's a hardest difficulty and collectibles and it should work for any of them, anybody that's interested in playing this game. So with all of that said, I just wanna get that out of the way and now we can get started with part one for the Village of Shadows walkthrough for Resident Evil. All right, so the game's gonna open up in suburbia for your white picket fence dream home and Mia's going to be basically cooking and yelling at you progressively for trying to just be a good dad. But collectible one is on the fridge door right here. It is the uh, fridge memo. And there is four collectibles in total of this house and the other three are upstairs in the, uh, the back rooms. So make your way upstairs and try to put Rose to sleep and um, just try to stay out of the doghouse with Mia, basically. So when you get to the top of the stairs, uh, make a left, and then you'll notice that there is a tribute to the old Resident Evil collectible items, the bobblehead, on that dresser straight ahead. But turn right and go through this door, and you'll find collectible number two, or file number two, uh, the old news clippings, and pick it up on this table and make sure you scroll through it to collect it. And then now you can head back to the master suite and the office for the next two. All right, now once you make your way into the back bedroom, you can put Rose down, uh, not forever, just to sleep. Um, but I want to mention that there is a challenge that you can do in this room, and it's kicking the yellow beach ball into the study or the office. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be covering all of the challenges in this playthrough, but I just wanted to mention it because the wording on that challenge is a little bit odd, and uh, you have to kind of know who they're talking about. But just kick the ball into the back hallway, and you'll get the challenge. 
Um, mine gets stuck on the plant, actually. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, but yeah, go into this office and then you'll get the next two collectibles. Uh, one is the computer right here. And then the other one, if you open this drawer, you'll be able to find the file number four. And that is all the collectibles in this house. So all you have to do now from here on out is just beat the, uh, the game itself and uh, progress to the next uh, part of the game. And in case you haven't, definitely go through the house and look at all the pictures and things in the rooms that I didn't go in. Uh, there's no more collectibles or items to be really grabbed, just more lore. Um, but I'm assuming that you guys are on your second playthrough like I've recommended, so you guys have probably already seen it. However, if you haven't, definitely go to those rooms and check it out because there's some uh, backstory to Resident Evil 7. But once you make your way down to uh, Mia in the kitchen, it's going to start a series of cutscenes. And like I said, I'm skipping all the cutscenes, but once those are over, you're actually going to progress to the next chapter in this story, and you'll wake up in the snow in the middle of the night. So once you get to your feet, the fifth collectible is going to be file number five, and it's going to be the mission briefing. Um, and that's going to be uh, on the ground right here beside this body uh, next to the phone. All right, so once you've checked out the wreckage, now you can make your way up the hill and go into the woods and then make your way down a path until you reach a cabin in the woods. And for this part, I'm just going to speed it up significantly because Ethan walks extremely slow and there's, not, there's no items to pick up or anything like that. So just work your way down until you reach the cabin. So at this point, I, I kind of want to just pull Ethan aside and explain that if you walk down creepy paths, creepy things are going to happen. I honestly thought he learned his lesson after Resident Evil 7 and seeing how that all turned out by walking down a creepy path. But it seems like he doesn't. He just doesn't understand that when you follow the blood trail, nothing good's going to come. All right, so once you reach the cabin in the woods, there is going to be absolutely nothing you can pick up. It's just storyline stuff. Um, I think that they're showing you that you can and, uh, open up drawers. I don't know. Like, there's nothing in any of the drawers, so don't even, don't even bother. It's just scripted stuff that you have to open. Um, but don't let that sink that doesn't work scare you. It's, it's definitely the scariest thing in the game, but just try to not let that affect you. And just push onward till you get to the basement. All right, so once you make your way down into the basement, there's going to be a wardrobe, and instead of Narnia, it's actually going to spawn Ratatouille out of the uh, wardrobe, and then he's going to be running away because not it's not because the loud noise is upstairs. It's definitely because Ethan's just a scary dude. So, you know, I know a lot of people probably think it's because the lichen's attacking upstairs, but it's actually Ethan, so fun fact there. So now make your way upstairs and just continue down the story path. All right, so as you noticed, instead of it feeling like five minutes in that house, it was more like an hour or two because now it's daytime. So now you want to progress down the path until you reach this overlook right here. And this is a great point to get the uh, photographer trophy by opening up photo mode and just using that for uh, the photo mode. And it's a good photo, but it also is an early way to just knock that trophy out. All right, once you reach the bottom of the hill, this is like a good stopping point, and you actually are going to get your next couple collectibles, which is the crafting recipes. So open up your inventory, and you'll have the med kit and the handgun ammo crafting recipes, so just check those off, and you'll be ready to go. It's also a good point to do some inventory management and just double check that you do, in fact, have all your weapons from your previous load files and all of that stuff, and just reload your guns and whatnot. And um, you can also craft anything if you if you have the ability. So I would just stock up and just kind of take inventory and get set up. And then now you can progress through the village because this is like the last time it's going to be easy. It's going to be a living nightmare. Trust me. All right, so now make your way into the house that's right here on the right and go into the bedroom and you'll notice that there is a cabinet on the left over here that has a lock pick. And so if you already have one, then great. Go ahead and pick that. But if not, um, don't worry about it. You'll be able to come back anytime. So now make your way into the stables area and go to the backyard out here where their well is. And you won't be able to open that yet, but um, there is a bird cage you can shoot down with your handgun right here. And you can collect what's inside. 
Now go back out into the backyard and you'll be able to find the outhouse number one right here and just go ahead and open the door for that challenge and that trophy. Um, the outhouses are kind of weird. They're challenges, trophies, and collectibles. So I'm just going to show you where they're at and um, that way you have that as well. So now continue down the storyline path and feel free to loot these houses. There's nothing to actually grab and or uh, collect, but um, I do want to mention with that in mind that I'm not going to let you miss a house on the map. I will 100% the uh, the village map, and as that goes for everything on the map. Um, I know that you guys might be worried I might skip a house, but the only time I'll ever skip it is if it's not uh, needed for this storyline um, at the moment and or there's no loot. But I promise you by the end of this walkthrough, you will have gone in every single house at any point. So just follow along and don't worry. I won't let you guys down. Uh, you will collect every single thing. Um, so Outhouse 2 is right here at the end of this little path. And you'll that'll be the next collectible. And uh, you can loot inside and then make your way into the house for the next cutscene. So once you're in the house, then make your way to the back. There is a breakable box right there with uh, some loot and stuff. I hit that up later, um, but feel free to get that on your first pass through in this house. But go to this curtain and interact with it, and you will actually uh, start a cutscene and then spawn into the uh, the crawl space, I suppose. And then interacting with this guy is going to start a second cutscene, um, and then you're going to have your first fight, and that is a nightmare. So now let's go over fighting and or combat strategies. Um, for this one specifically, use the kettle as kind of a barrier and run, run circles around it or figure eights back and forth in the yard. But um, you're going to want to use your shotgun and then your pistol. So this kind of goes for all the enemies that are like this. Uh, you want to use your heavier gun to maybe knock them back um, and then use your infinite ammo on your pistol since you can't run out to kind of pop them when they're not right up in your face. Um, and like, of course, if you have the grenade launcher or infinite ammo on the shotgun, use whatever your best gun is, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to use the pistol. I'm just making this walkthrough for somebody that maybe doesn't have infinite ammo on every single gun. So, um, just use your pistol as much as possible and be patient and just try to stay back and then use your blocking, which is the left bumper on PlayStation and you'll be able to evade the attacks a lot easier. But uh, I've noticed that if you stick to the side of them, you'll actually get a lot of missed hits and that's really good. So just kind of like sidestep them and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that's my best advice on combat. But now make your way into that house and grab the bolt cutters like you saw and then loot up this house. Um, and you can actually craft your first uh, health potion or first aid med kit. And now you can cut the gate open with your bolt cutters. Now, on the other side of this gate, you're going to find a house, and it's going to be your first lockdown is what I'm going to call them. Um, for any of my subscribers out there that are from Zombies, from Call of Duty Zombies, uh, this is going to be basically Grossen House um, from World War II Zombies. But basically, you're going to stick in this house and survive. And this kind of starts the next sequence of the game, which is just straight up hell. And it's a great way to open the game, but it's also a pain in the ass on Village of Shadows. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do this with just the pistol and the shotgun and just show you that it's not as bad as it might seem. Um, for those of you that have the infinite ammo on the grenade launcher, this is a joke. Uh, just use that as much as possible. But for those of you that are like me that only have the infinite ammo on the pistol, uh, just watch what I'm doing. It's, it's not as bad as it looks. Um, but basically, you're just going to pop them off the windows as they jump on. And realistically, all you have to do is kill two of them, and then the, the sequence will stop. So you want to just like pop shot them as they climb in, and just kind of keep an eye on your, uh, anything that might spawn behind you. Um, but my best advice for this is to stand in the doorway and pop the guy who's going to repeatedly come back to the door. That'll be one kill, and then wanna, you want to make sure that you're watching behind on the staircase. Because there's going to be a guy that spawns on the staircase, and that'll be your, your second kill. Um, so I use all of my pistol on the guy in the door, and then I use the shotgun once he hops in. All 
Alright, so right there, that guy hops in through that window, and that's what I was talking about. You just want to be aware of that. And you're just going to want to shotgun him uh, as much as you can and use the, sh the pistol when he falls over. Um, now, I would run upstairs and then kind of make little laps and just keep running up and then hopping down and running up and hopping down. Um, that seems to be the easiest way to do it. Um, but yeah, you can use those stairs. He'll get kind of stuck on the corner, and that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but once you get those two kills, the guy at the door and the guy that hops in, it'll actually stop the cutscene, or the, the attack, I suppose, and now you can leave out the front door. And this is where the game is going to get hellishly difficult, and uh, it's, it's almost impossible unless you have the grenade launcher or infinite shotgun or something. But I've played this enough times to figure out that there's actually a pretty good cheese method um, that you're not necessarily cheesing, but it's definitely a lot easier. Um, and so I would just recommend following this exact pathing, but you're going to want to basically just run and you're going to outsmart the zombies or the lichens. But right here on this polka dotted table would be the shotgun collectible. Now, because I've already gotten it in my previous playthrough, it's not showing up. But for anyone that has not picked up the shotgun, that will be your next collectible on that polka dotted table. You'll be able to pick up the shotgun. So now back to our escape route, you're going to want to make your way to the, um, the cellar area of this house. Kind of wait for a second when that one spawns in, shoot the flower, and that will allow you to run to this next house. And I would just be using your pistol since it has infinite ammo. And you're going to want to run into this and then go to the back right corner right here, let the door shut, and then quickly shut the bookcase on the door. Now this is going to buy you a few seconds and you're going to want to loot up in this house and then stand exactly where I'm standing in order to mess up with the spawns. So like you did in the previous lockdown, you're gonna wanna pop them off the windows, that way they don't break them out a little bit too early, especially on this left window. Um, but you're kinda just waiting for them to break through the front door and then you're gonna start with the next sequence. All right, so once they break in, you're going to want to try to shoot the barrel. Now, I kind of uh, feel like I did shoot it the first couple times, but the game said no, and I got hit. But odds are you're probably going to hit it without getting hit, and you'll be able to knock them all off their feet. So once you've shot the barrel, climb the ladder as fast as possible, and then jump off the roof, and actually make your way back to the previous house. So right here, take a right off the roof, and get into the river, and then just haul ass to the first house. Um, and try your best not to get hit. Uh, you can go a little bit wider than I did and go back around the first house you were in um, with that first lockdown. But it's, it's just as easy to go down the middle. Um, I just seem to be getting hit unnecessarily. But y you shouldn't have any issues. Um, so right here, you're going to want to shut the bookcase for house number two and get ready to survive. Um, which, by that, I mean just loot up and then go back in this back hallway. Um, this is where the cheese method kind of really starts off. It's just going to be... Instead of doing a mini boss fight and fighting about 30 enemies all at once, you're going to stand in this house right here in this, this back room, and you're going to basically kill one at a time. And it's really, really easy. Alright, so there I'm, I'm just kind of showing like how it can be. And then here's where it gets so much easier. Um, you just stand here and watch the ladder. And for some reason, they will not spawn in that front door. They just won't. Um, they only come up the ladder from right here. And it's basically one at a time. And so you just use your shotgun. And if you hit the headshots, great. Uh, if you get in trouble, there is the bag of flour that you can buy you some time. Um, and you'll see me use that at some point, but that's basically it. Just sit here and buy yourself some time until eventually the, the cutscene triggers and you get to go to the next part. And I'm basically using this, this gameplay of my non-perfect run because that's probably what, how yours is going to look. I imagine, uh, it, it took me several playthroughs to like get to where I didn't have to use any health and things like that, but I chose to use the, the, the playthrough where I got hit a lot um, just to show you that it's not always the end of the world when you get hit and there are methods to recovering and continuing on. It's not, it's not the worst thing. Um, but yeah, you basically want to just use the resources around you um, and decide whether it's time to run and or time to fight. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. Like As you can see, I just keep repeatedly getting hit. 
Um, but like, it's not—it's not the end of the world. I don't know. It's—it's it's not as bad as it might seem. All right, so once you see that Lycan uh, basically have his way with you, it's going to trigger the, the cutscene, which means that you are on to the next part. And this kind of wraps up the intro to the game. It's This is like your welcome to the village. Uh, if you were a Resident Evil 7 fan, it's kind of the moment where Jack's like, welcome to the family. It's that kind of thing. And now you're ready to actually enter the village and experience the open world aspect. All right, so now it's going to be uh, spawning you back in your same area, and you want to go ahead and loot all the houses in this area before progressing if you guys missed anything um, before the fight, which most likely you did if you're on this difficulty. So just go back to each house, and if it turns blue on the map, you, that means that you finished it, and uh, just go ahead and collect any ammo or anything like that, and then get set up for the, the next segment. All right, once you're ready, now make your way back over to the gate in the main story path and then head through and you'll meet the old lady for the first time and get a cutscene. After that, now you can make your way into the cemetery area of the main map and there's going to be the next few collectibles. So over here, you're going to see the glowing orange little hut thing over here and it's going to have two collectibles. The first one is going to be note number six or file number six and it's going to be the, the, uh, the plaque on the bottom right there. Go ahead and read it and then you're going to want to um, break the goat right here and get your first goat collectible as well. After that, then turn around and there's going to be a house that's going to have the next file, file number seven, inside on the, the table on the main house. So there is an enemy right here. It scared the shit out of me because I just didn't expect it. Uh, so you should probably be more ready than I was um, and just use your shotgun and pistol like we talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't be able to get hit by him. I just didn't know there was going to be an enemy right there and it kind of hurt. But um, going forward, the, the note that you need to collect, the file is actually on the side table in the back right corner right here. And that will unlock your, your next collectible. Also, some of the loot in this house is a little bit tricky, and beyond the uh, the cabinets, there is a lockpick right here. Uh, you can go ahead and open that for some shotgun ammo, I believe. And then there is also um, a hidden loot kind of uh, between the table and the bed. Um, so you just want to crouch until you find that, and you'll be able to pick that up. So now that you're done with that house, now go back to the cemetery, which is kind of the centralized location of this whole village. And from here, you're going to want to make your way to the church. Um, really quick, I do want to point out that on the left over here in the cemetery, there is a piece that you're going to need later on in the game. And there's only a very small window to actually unlock that gate. Um, and so you want to make sure that you follow along with this guide as, as closely as possible to get that. But there is going to be goat number two on top of the church roof right here. So just go ahead and shoot that. And then now you can make your way into the church and pick up the uh, maiden crest. And that's going to be used for the storyline. Um, that is not a collectible, this note right here. It's just simply there. Um, so don't worry too much about that. But you can actually uh, shoot down a gemstone right here in the picture frame to complete the, uh, the map and get the house to turn blue. And, of course, there is a save function right here that I suggest you make your first save. Now, once you're saved, you're going to reach the cornfields, and this is going to be the next part where you're going to implement step one of just run for your life. And you're going to want to basically uh, collect the loot in the box right here and on the side, but don't worry too much about the loot because you will be coming back here in just a moment. Um, but basically, there are a few uh, ridiculously overpowered enemies in this cornfield, and it's not at all like the other difficulties. This is a nightmare. Um, but you're going to want to just basically trigger their attention by shooting one of them in the back and then use the flower to buy you some time and then just haul ass down the left side of the, uh, the, the cornfield. 
Once you get to the top of the hill, you're going to see the blue hut right here with the door. Go ahead and interact with it. And unfortunately, I got hit as I was opening the door, so it, it made me red screen. But um, if you're faster than that, you should be okay. But even if you do get hit like I do, it'll be okay. And uh, you might want to just get used to the fact that you don't have any resources because this mode is going to make things severely limited and difficult and one hit is enough to make you red screen. So you're going to want to get used to that and just uh, learn how to push forward and just suffer in silence like the rest of us, you know. So once you've done that, now make your way through the hut, drop down and you're going to find outhouse number three right here. So go ahead and open that and then loot up inside of there. And um, then you can go ahead and make your way to the, the main gate. So yeah, go ahead and open up the uh, the main gate right here and let your friends through. And then you can go ahead and go to the front door of the house and trigger the next cutscene. And then you'll be able to get your next collectible just after this cutscene. So file number eight is over here in this brown leather chair. And there's another save device uh, right here that I would recommend saving. Um, but this will be the only collectible in Louise's house. Um, so don't worry too much about looting uh, other than storyline stuff. Um, but yeah, it's basically just uh, for setting up the world and you don't have to worry too much about collectibles. However, to get this white door open, you do have to interact with the, uh, the picture book over here. I, I don't know why, but you do. So just do that and then the door will open and she'll let you in. Now, this is going to be a lengthy cutscene, and you're going to meet some of the other villagers that are left. And I'm going to be the first one to say, when you get to this part right here and the dad loses his mind, do not waste any of your ammo. You do not have to shoot this dude. Don't waste anything at all. Your, uh, your friend, his daughter, is going to take care of your issue, and you don't need to waste your ammo. Um, so once that cutscene's over, then you're going to spawn into the garage, and you need to find the car keys. Um, I, there is nothing really to loot in this area other than the car keys. So just kind of work your way to the back, uh, area over here. And actually, I guess there is a herb right there you can pick up and then there might be some ammo, I think in the back left corner, but overall it's just get the car keys out of the green cabinet. So yeah, right here in this drawer, there's going to be the keys, and you need to inspect it further to get the screwdriver that you'll need later out of that. Um, and I think, yeah, there's shotgun ammo right here, and then that will be everything. So yeah, the house will turn blue if you've picked up everything, which is a good way to, to just do uh, get in the habit of that early, uh, just checking all the houses. And if you do that, you'll get that mathematician uh, challenge done, no problem. So right here, I guess Ethan's goal is to just defy physics and fit trucks through doorways. I'm not really sure what his escape plan was, but this is coming from the same guy who decided walking down a sketchy path was the way to go. So I don't really trust Ethan's sense of direction, but I guess the game lets, like forces you to, um, so I guess we'll have to just get over that. All right, so after Ethan's little breakdown in the window frame where he gets all moody, drop down over here and then use your screwdriver on this little uh, glowing hut right here, and you'll be able to get the demon crest uh, for the main door to the castle. Interacting with that gate from earlier is going to trigger another cutscene where you meet Mother Miranda for the first time. And then now you're going to go to the right for your final collectible in part number one uh, for my walkthrough, and that is going to be goat number three. So just head over here to the right, and you'll see it on top of these uh, this wall right here, and you'll be able to shoot it down. All right, now that that's done, now you're going to make your way back to the cemetery area of the map, 
And um, I'm also going to mention while I'm walking back there that I'm going to uh, leave it up to you to loot some of the houses and uh, explore some stuff because I'm not sure like if you have enough lock picks and things like that. So I don't want to like force someone to do something that they don't have the resources for. And in between part one and two, I would just encourage you to go look at any of the houses that you don't have blue at the moment. Um, there should only be a couple left if you guys uh, didn't have a lock pick in that first area, like where the, the stables were, things like that. Um, just go ahead and loot up and make sure that your map is, is blue as much as you can be. Um, I think there's like six houses in total, so it's not a lot. The, uh, the cornfield area that we just went through, there are two houses in there that you can loot up and get some more supplies like a mine and whatnot. Um, so just go ahead and like explore the world. Um, I'm just not going to waste your time with boring looting. Uh, I just want to make a point to mention it uh, between the different parts. So just do that, and then uh, you'll be ready to get to part number two. So right here, there is the door that is going to lead to the castle. Insert your two crests and line them up, and that'll open that. And then I would suggest basically saving at the, the church, and then you'll be ready to move on to part number two. While the rest of this plays out, I just want to thank you guys so much for uh, watching this, and I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this and it's helpful, and I will see you in part number two when we get to the castle, and we are going to basically be exploring the grounds of the castle. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next part.